Hello, my name is Ramon Sanchez, and I'm from the University of Texas Rio Grande Valley. And this is my final presentation on the research of detecting and characterizing coding failures in buried oil and gas pipelines. This work was supported by the Department of Energy National Nuclear Security Administration under award number DENA000-3857, the NSF, Online REU Program at Texas A&M and the Department of Transportation. Collaborators in this research is Dr. Romero Castaneda from Texas A&M University. The outline of this presentation will start by research approach, techniques used, results and analysis, summary results, and at the end, references and acknowledgements. So for our research approach is to be able to detect and characterize the coding failures, also known as holidays, that occur to metallic assets, which are underground pipes, without having to physically examine them. So what we mean by this is to, uh, we want to see, uh, like I said, characterize the severity of the, uh, of the defects while having to go out in the field and mess up the setup that the underground pipes are already in. So these failures occur because of the continuous exposure to the corrosive species existing in the soil, which makes the metallic components susceptible to the natural phenomenon of corrosion. Another contributor is the third party damages, uh, which consists of poor surface preparation, unqualified coating application, soil stress, and mechanical damage by backfill. Here I have a representation of how, um, of how our corrosive species is absorbed by our, by, our, um, by our coating. And the coating that we use is FBE, which is uh, fusion bonded epoxy. So as it's absorbed by the coating, we get blistering. And as it goes into, as it gets to our substrate, which is our steel substrate, uh, it causes delamination, and then we have our holiday. Um, and then in the other representation, our simulated environment that we use or the corrosive species is uh, NS4, which is used in this research. So the techniques utilized in this research is electrochemical impedance uh, spectroscopy, which is EIS is used to analyze and quantify the mechanistic process, processes occurring at each form interface, which is our coding substrate and electrotel coding by sending AC signals through the substrate. So here's a representation of how our setup looks. And we have our impedance analyzer connected to our working electrode, which is submerged in the NS4 solution. Again, this is our simulated soil, uh, which has a holiday already. And we have our counter electrode, which is graphite, our reference electrode, which is copper sulfate, and we also have our ground. And here's a representation of how these uh, of how these pipes look with uh, a holiday in them. Here we have one that doesn't have any uh, corrosion yet, and then we have this one that has um, a severe corrosion in it. Again, we uh, we want to be able to see and detect them without uh, these type of um, these type of defects without having to pull them out or, or go out in the field and mess up the setup that they're in. Data collected from this technique is impedance that is measured through the substrate that can be plotted in what is also known as a Nyquist plot. Uh, another, another technique used is uh, transmission line modeling, which is known as TLM. Uh, TLM quantifies a corrosion system by dividing an electrochemical interface into sub-elements of defined scale which is compared to the entire system. So basically with our TLM, we're able to make uh, and simulate the experiment in a software. And so in this software, we can put, uh, we have parameters of the resistance of the coding and the pipe, and we're able to create failure modes. Uh, failure modes, which are, are delamination or disbondment and also create holidays. Here in this, uh, while, we, while using the TLM, we were able to create um, a physical um, electrical, uh, electrical components of the, of the TLM model that we have. As you can see, this is, they are both proportional to each other. Um, and, in this, um, and in this electrical component, we're able, uh, this one simulates a 40 kilometer pipeline with failure, mo uh, with failure modes. 
So for our results and analysis, the values of interest that we found were the Warburg coefficient, uh, which is the fusion coefficient of ions in solution, uh, the capacitance of non-corroded uh, RC interface, which is the capacitance in, in the, uh, which is an indication of the rate of corrosion resistance of a metal surface, and the corrosion rate, which is dependent on the RCT value from the I-core equation. Corrosion rate is the value at which the substrate is degrading at, and the RCT is the polarization resistance of the substrate. As you can see here in our Nyquist diagram, we have our experimental data, which was um, curve fitted to our TLM, or our TLM is curve fitted to our experimental data. And as you can see, the blue uh, the blue indicators show that we have a we have a we have a defect in our substrate. And again, uh, one way to illustrate how this happens is by um, is by our, our uh, diffusion diffusion that ha occurs. When we have our corrosive uh, specimen that diffuses through our coating through the passive layer, and eventually goes through our substrate steel and creates the defect, which is the holodeck. So the Warburg coefficient and capacitance of non-corroded RC interface. Using sensitivity analysis, um, we used it to indicate the severity characteristics of the holiday coating deterioration. As the Warburg coefficient increases with increasing the potential, this indicates that the protective corrosion film becomes more compact when the potential is increased. As you can see, this uh, we simulated using the TLM as we increased it we had a more protective corrosion film. As I said, uh, same can be said for, this, uh, our, for both plots. As we increased them, we had a better corrosion film, which became more compact, which didn't let the diffusion of our corrosive species go through the passive layer and then go into our substrate. Um, so for our corrosion rate, which is um, uh, we, using the Tafel constants and the I-core equations, we were able to uh, come out with a corrosion rate of both our experimental and TNM uh, data. As you can see, we were able to get uh, for experimental, we had 0 0.1415 um, mils per year. And for our TNM was 0 0.0835 um, mils per year. Uh, one thing uh, we wanted to isolate and see what would happen if we were to increase these values. And as a result, as we increase our RCT values, which is um, proportionate to our, our, our polarization resistance, uh, as we increased it, we, we saw a lower corrosion rate. And this um, using, uh, using this plot. Uh, one note is the limitation of the software when comparing experimental data to the TNM data in the system. So for the summary results, with this computer software, we accomplished integrating EIS and TNM techniques, which aided in creating a simulated TNM circuit model in the software that was proportionate to the data collected in our EIS experimental results. With both TNM and EIS data, we were also, we were also able to detect the coding defects, which helped evaluate the degree to which the coding has failed and what parameters were sensitive in increasing and decreasing the rate of corrosion. In future work, this software will allow us to conduct simulated conditions and give a pathway for the integrity of assets under operation conditions. So these are our references and acknowledgements. Again, um, I wanna thank CREDS for giving me this opportunity to, to work in this research, as well as Dr. Omero Castellana for giving me this opportunity to work with him uh, conducting these experiments. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.